Hello beautiful souls, I hope you guys are doing super super well today. So today we're going to talk about Saturn. Saturn is in retrograde um, in Aquarius. Now I am a bit late to the party, um, Saturn actually went retrograde in Aquarius um, back in May, uh, May 23rd. Um, and will be in retrograde until around October 11th of this year. So, as I say, I'm a bit late to the party and I I, I do apologise for that. I was, um, I was moving house around that time and then, as you all know, Matilda died on me. So, um, it is a retrograde that kind of slipped through my fingers a little bit and I wasn't able to make a video at the time about it um but now we're back so i i thought we should catch up on ourselves um there's another couple of retrogrades happening um over the next few days as well which we're going to be looking at um but we'll get we'll get there when we get there right so today we're going to talk about saturn now saturn is the um is the ruler of uh, rules, boundaries, and limitations. Um, Saturn is the 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 enforcer of structure. So, when Saturn goes into retrograde, it means that he isn't doing those things, right? So, at the moment, we're kind of left to our own devices. Um, we're we're left to. Uh, conjure up our own rules, boundaries and limitations because it is the nature of things to have rules, boundaries and limitations. Um, <clears throat> it's where we find our routine and we find our anchor. So as much as it sounds like mm, rules, boundaries, uh, limitations, right, it sounds a bit like negative um it's it's definitely not um it's where we find our neutral space it's where we like i say we we find our anchorage um it's how we learn to interact with ourselves and our environment you know we have those healthy boundaries right of how we um approach other people and how we expect others to approach us so we we use what Saturn does for us as kind of a a guidebook that we carry around with us and then if we get stuck we refer to it to see what we're currently capable of uh, where our expectations lie um, and how you know what what's our code of conduct in this lifetime right um <clears throat> so as i say in the absence of uh, saturn enforcing um the rules boundaries and limitations of let's call it the old world so prior to the great conjunction um if you want to know more about the great conjunction i'm pretty sure i did a video on it um just have a little trawl through um the collective readings playlist here on youtube um, to sum it up, uh, the Great Conjunction happened on the 21st of December. I'm sorry, I know I sound like a broken record. I know I mention this every single reading. Um, but if you know what I'm talking about, then you understand why I mention it every single reading. Uh, Great Conjunction was between Saturn and, uh, Jupiter. Um, back December 21st of 2020. And it spelled the official beginning of the age of Aquarius. Now, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm bombarding you with information here, but everything is so interwoven and there's so much going on um, <clears throat> astrologically and energetically. So I'm just going to throw out all of these nuggets of information. And if your head feels like it's going to explode, then, you know, just rewatch um, the reading, maybe go back over the last couple of readings. Um, you can skip to the juicy bits, you know, if you've seen them before. Um, so, the age of Aquarius, um, it's it's going to last for about two, three thousand years, you know, it's, it's definitely going to influence the rest of our lifetime now. 
Um, so we were born at a very, um, a very sought after time, really, in the human timeline. Um, because, you know, there, there are literally souls, like, queuing up to come to Earth right now. Um, and envy the likes of us who were born in the before time because we have experienced the old world the old structures uh, the old boundaries and and limitations and rules um, that saturn's been enforcing up until this point um and we've welcomed in the the official beginning you know of the age of aquarius and Aquarius, um, Aquarius is the age of um, higher thinking, higher knowing, higher perspective. Um, what can we do to serve the collective? It's all about loving the collective, loving yourself, therefore loving the collective, and serving, aiding, guiding the collective. Um so, you know, it's a very important time and with every retrograde planet that goes direct, etc, etc, you know, every lunar event and astrological event um, that happens for the foreseeable future is guiding us to our higher selves. It's guiding us to aid, serve, guide the collective. Um, so everything has its place. Everything's working with one another. Spirit is mapping this stuff out for us so that we can use it to the highest degree. So we can find ourselves. So I know I'm sort of bouncing around a little bit all over the place, but it's like the chicken and the egg kind of thing. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> We, we can't really define a, a, um, a starting point. It's just everything's just kind of muddling together and it's all working together. So I'll do my best to make this a uh, linear kind of thing um, with the dates um, and such. But if I'm hopping around and talking about the Age of Aquarius and then I'm talking about the Great Conjunction and then I'm talking about a retrograde and then I'm talking about a lunar event, it's because everything's influencing each other. So I'm sorry, I don't mean to bombard you and I don't mean to confuse anybody. Um, it's just, you know, admittedly it is a lot for us to get our head, heads around um, to understand how things are working with one another. But I will do my best to um to lay it out in a way that it makes sense so so focusing on saturn then now that we understand what saturn usually does for us um saturn uh when it's in retrograde is not doing these things that it normally does right so it's not enforcing the rules boundaries and limitations and as i said let's call it of the old world because since the Great Conjunction, December 21st, um, like I said, go and have a look more in depth um, for a more in depth explanation as to what the Great Conjunction was. I feel like if I go into it now, we're going to be, we've already been here for 10 minutes, we're going to be here forever. Um, so Saturn and Jupiter were within one or two degrees of one another. It's the closest they've been to each other in um, hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, so it was a very, very unique event and we were able to actually see it happen with the naked eye on the horizon on December 21st, the same day as the winter solstice um, last year. So um, this event um, with the energies that it brought um, heralded in the official beginning of the Age of Aquarius. Between December and the beginning of May of this year, we've been influenced, yes, by a lot of different astrological events, but they've all been very gentle. They've all been um, helping us to adjust to the new energies. This is why I'm calling it the old world and now the new world, because these new energies are 
completely new they're completely unique they're completely alien to us we have spent our whole lives up until december last year being influenced by energies of a particular ilk of a particular pocket of a of a particular kind right all the same the same 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 and now that we're in this new world the energies are completely different our dna is being restructured our um you know the the way that we do everything the way that we structure our lives the way that we refer to ourselves the way that we influence other people the way that we interact with ourselves the way we think the way we function it's all completely different and right now we're in the middle of redefining all of those things we haven't yet um changed we are changing right now so this is why um all of these astrological events like i said a minute ago they are just so 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 important right now because we are so being influenced by them and we are restructuring everything everything is being restructured around us and that we are restructuring ourselves so this is why i say it's a bit like the chicken and the egg because as within so without at the moment it's hard to see kind of what's influencing what it's like we the inner world are working in tandem with the outer world with the astrological world with the spiritual world which comes first it's anyone's guess really at this point we're influencing each other let's say so so um we'll we'll get to drawing cards in a moment i just really want to lay in this kind of foundation for our reading so that the cards make more sense so that we understand truly what this um retrograde means for us so as i said it did begin on uh may 23rd now um as i was saying about um you know we've been allowed time to just kind of adjust to these new energies between um the great conjunction and the beginning of may now i say the beginning of may because around the beginning of may we moved into a new energetic phase this phase is a lot more action orientated we were very much um between december and the beginning of may that energetic energetic phase was as i said a very gentle one so that we could readjust um to these new energies so it was a very inward a very introspective gentle phase there wasn't really much changing in the physical reality um it was all just kind of introspection getting used to things on on the inner in the inner world come may we moved into a more action orientated energy um where things started to change and reflect outside of us um in the physical reality we've had you know six months of thinking time um so it became doing time and we are right now still in that phase we're going to continue in this um action orientated physically orientated phase until around october so now this brings me to this saturn retrograde which ends in october began in may ends in october right so it's influencing us during this action phase what is also noteworthy is pluto is currently in retrograde as well um has been since april can't remember the date um but also ends october october 2nd saturn ends october 11 um which is around the time between the beginning and the middle of uh, like the first two weeks of october is when we're going to shift into a different energetic phase not sure what yet because we're not there um but as we get closer to it i will be able to see that far and i will be giving you information so that you can be prepared on it 
But for the time being, we need to focus on what's right under our nose. So isn't it interesting that um, Saturn and uh, Pluto are both in retrograde at the same time um, and ends the same time? It's because their energies are required right now, but are not required in the following energetic phase, which we're not sure what it's going to be yet. Um, so I have done a detailed reading for the Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. I did that last month. Um, do go and watch that. Definitely worth watching that if you haven't seen it already, because uh, Saturn retrograde energy... And Pluto retrograde energy are working in tandem. Um, so in honour of this reading, what I will um, point out, I'll just do a little recap, okay, for Pluto retrograde, but I'll let you go and watch that video. In fact, it might be worth pausing this video and going and watching the Pluto retrograde video, okay, just so you know what's up. Um, but just as a little recap... Um, the Pluto um, retrograde in Capricorn, so an Earth sign, is helping us to look at our career, what we're passionate about. It's encouraging us to look at our current career path and asking ourselves if it satisfies us. Most people are saying, no, it does not. So it's influencing us to really look at that, see what we're passionate about, and find something that we can do that we are passionate about that really works for us. It pays us back, right? It's balanced. How can we better serve the collective? How can we allow our passion or drive our passion forward in a way that benefits the collective but also benefits us? Which is basically looking at career, right? Um, so with Saturn that's now influencing us to look at the rules, boundaries and limitations that we, that we did have enforced upon us and now we don't because it's in retrograde. Like I said earlier, you know, the nature of things is for us to have rules, boundaries and limitations. It's necessary. We rely on them. So in the absence of any of that stuff, we are looking within ourselves to form our own. So now you can see why I was talking about the Great Conjunction, the Age of Aquarius and all of that other good stuff, right? The, all of this stuff is influencing us to create rules, boundaries and limitations of a particular kind. And it's working in tandem, as I said, with Pluto, where we're looking at our career path and how can we change that to be something more um, satisfying both individually and also to the collective, with Saturn, with Saturn's retrograde energy, we're form forming new boundaries and rules and limitations when it comes to our own lives. So we're looking at what we're looking at all at the same time. We're looking at our career. We're looking at our passions, we're looking at what serves the collective, we're looking at what serves ourselves, and we're looking at what um, restructuring can we do in our lives that satisfies all of those different things all at the same time. So we can see how Saturn and Pluto retrograde energies are working together, yes? So... With all that being said, let's draw some cards, right? I think we're... we're um, I think it would be a good idea for us to look at um, past, present and future for this. Right, I'm sorry, not sorry, that we've been basically been talking and not drawing cards for the last 20 minutes. Um, I hope you understand how it's just so necessary that we talked about all of this stuff first so that we could really understand um, what this reading's for, right? Um, so what I'm going to be doing is um we'll do past present future for this reading but i will just say before we get stuck in um that because these retrogrades are going on for six odd months um i'm going to be doing recaps about halfway through now um pluto retrograde uh we will hit the halfway point 
around the 20th-ish, I think it was, of July. So in a month's time, we'll do a recap and see how we're getting on with that energy. I'm going to do the exact same thing with, with uh, the Saturn retrograde energy. We are already a month in, like I said, at the very, very beginning of this uh, video. I am late to the party. <laughs> I, I'm well aware that we are already a month into this energy. So looking at the past, present, future, I think will be very useful because the past will bring up not only the old world energy, but also the energy when um, this retrograde first began. And then we can look at present energies and then how we can expect to continue to be influenced by it um, over the next few months. And then in a couple of months, I will do a recap. Um, August, right? Is that, is that right? May? June, July, August, September, October, yeah, August-ish, so probably the beginning, middle of August, uh, we'll do a recap, so I'll be doing the same with all of the planets that are going into retrograde, we have um, a couple of, a couple more retrogrades going on, um, I want to say Jupiter and Neptune are going into retrograde, in the next couple of days and I'm pretty sure they're both retrograding in Scorpio don't quote me on it I can't remember it's just off the top of my head um, but look out for those readings as well because their energies will be added to this reading and the energies of Pluto being a retrograde as well so so okay before I <laughs> before I start I'm going to drink some tea I know it's a lot of talking, but I hope you understand that it was necessary. So looking at the past then, we've got river movement and we've also got waterfall effortless. Look at that. Two bodies of water. How interesting is that? It's like never happens. So we can see that there's forward movement, there's flow, excuse the pun. Um, there's this effortless... Um, forward movement so what I would say is I feel this is referring to the old world energy um we were just so used to the structure of things right um there was no real questioning of things excuse me there was no questioning of law and order um I feel like there was a lot of, well, I've always done things this way, so I'm going to continue to do things this way. If it's not broken, don't fix it. People saying things like that. Um, <laughs> we'll see how significantly different things are now, I imagine, vastly. Um, but there was a lot of that going on, right? We were born into a particular energy and that energy continued right up until December of last year. So however many years that is for you, um, f f like most of your life, right? <laughs> Unless you were born last year, right? Most of your life, you were so used to um, things being structured a particular way. So everything was very easy, right? Because it's what you knew. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see what else we've got here. Now we've got that overall energy. Um, let's see what it meant for us and how it was influencing us. Have I got the wrong deck? Yep. <clears throat> Is this the wrong deck too? Okay, fine. <laughs> All right, we'll do our doing deck then. Um, what were we learning from this? What action were we taking on it? It'll make more sense when the cards come out. If they ever come out, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so we've got the Arrow Master, hitting the mark, intention, detachment. Also card number 10, which we can um, 
we can um, take from that the number one, because you add the numbers together. One and zero, obviously, is still one. Um, so, ironically, new beginnings, uh, sense of self, union, um, the united self is what I mean by union. I'm not talking about twin flame stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, through this very effortless forward movement um, kind of energy... Um, we were able to understand ourselves. Um, it was a lot easier for us to look within, for us to go about our intentions and, and go after our goals and desires. It was just, everything was just very easy, right? Hitting the mark. Um, <clears throat> it made things just like there was no resistance. We were able just to be ourselves, understand ourselves, learn ourselves, right? So we can see how this was so very necessary, um, that, that all of this together was very necessary um, up until this point in our lives, from birth until this point in our lives, because I feel that if it wasn't this way, if we were, go like, if we were undergoing... Um, a gigantic overhaul like we currently are but earlier in our lives um we would not have had the opportunity to learn ourselves and then these changes that we're going through right now wouldn't be as significant now bearing in mind Yes, this is a collective reading, but this is a collective reading for everyone who's watching this video, right? This is not a collective reading for anyone who isn't here and present. So these are messages for the people that are hearing them, right? I hope that makes sense. The, these are not messages for people who aren't here, right? So if you're not watching this video, then this isn't for you, right? It's not relevant to you. Um, and I'm pointing that out because what I've just said there is only relevant as to whoever's watching this, right? It's not relevant to people who were who are part of the collective but were born last year or were five years or like are five years old right now or are 70 years old and are so set in their ways that it's unlikely to change, right? Um the messages that I bring forth in my readings are for the people that are receiving them, readily receiving them. They're, they're for the people, you know, which is why I always say, if this doesn't resonate with you, click off, go find another reader. You know, go find another reading. Like, it, I'm not the reader for you. Um, so, all right. So, 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 so. Let's move into a different deck and see what else. Yeah, there, see. Right, this, I picked this deck up a second ago, <laughs> but it wouldn't give me a card, and I just picked it back up and it gave me a card straight away. <laughs> right. Empathic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours. <laughs> How interesting. How interesting is that? Okay, so from the past um energies then um i feel that this is really talking about um the empathic side of this collective that's watching right now hiya that gigantic shadow is my little potato baby are you itchy itchy baby today hiya <laughs> that's little lot of rama um <clears throat> yes absorbing what's not yours right so what we've learned up until this point about ourselves um obviously this is just for those of you who are watching many of you are empaths many of you are healers many of you are tarot and oracle readers Either way, you are, umbrella term, you are energy workers. 
and you are very empathic. So you've been learning up until this point what's yours and what's not, right? Because <laughs> to be an empath <clears throat> is to be a little energetic sponge and to pick up everybody's emotions and feelings and intentions and ideas. You feel it all because you're so connected to the collective. You are a true um, vein in the collective where you are um, influenced by and um, influencing the collective because you are a throbbing part of it, integral part of it. Um, so it's necessary for you to be empathic. It's necessary for you to be um, all feeling in this little sponge um, so that you can do the work that you do and so that you can understand yourself in the way that you do. When you can decipher what is yours and what is somebody else's, then you have a better understanding of yourself, yes? So this energy has been essential for you, for us, for the collective to understand what you've absorbed that's not yours. It's to help you. This has helped you. <laughs> Um, to better understand yourself, to understand where these thoughts and feelings and ideas and such come from. Um, whether they come from you or they come from somebody else so that you are able to separate yourself from others so you can understand yourself better. So I hope that makes sense. Let's have a look at the present. <clears throat> What's the present... Uh, the present energies then so we can see that these structures that saturn brought has influenced us greatly um in a very positive way so that we can understand ourselves now with the lack of this structure um we are being influenced in this way so we have this iceberg energy this submerged energy which is really interesting um because we are in a little mini state of ebb right now rather than flow. So the energetic state that we're in right now is action orientated, like I was talking about earlier. It's a very action orientated um, energy, which began the beginning of May. But within these um, energetic phases, we experience pockets of ebb energy and flow energy. So where things are moving forward, flow, and where we are in introspection, ebb. This is the natural order of energy. It's just the way it works. It ebbs and it flows. It's like the, um, it's like the ocean waves, right? Um, on a beach, on a shoreline. They ebb and they flow, <laughs> right? Um, so we are currently in a little mini state of ebb, um, and we are on the brink of moving into flow. So I imagine in a moment when we look at future energy, um, it will be indicative of more flow energy. So right now <clears throat> we are within, we're in this kind of frozen state where there's not much going on in the physical reality. And we are thinking, this is thinking introspective time. So I feel that because we're only a month into this retrograde, the changes and influences and such have not yet taken place. They're only just getting started. Um, so, I mean, doesn't this make sense, right? <clears throat> that we, we've been in this all the way up until recently. And we need time to be introspective, to um, to adjust <laughs> to the absence of this energy that we've been influenced by for our entire lives. We need a little bit of a breather so that we can really feel things out like, oh shit, everything that I've ne ever known is now not the case. The, the rules, boundaries and limitations that I have been influenced by for my entire life are now no longer present. 
I mean, it's not the best analogy I've ever come up with, but... Or perhaps I'm being shown it, which means I can blame Aurora for this. <laughs> but it's a bit like... I mean, by no means have we been in a prison, right? We've not been in a prison whatsoever. But the analogy or the vision or whatever, the, the visual that I'm getting right now is that we've been in a locked, behind a locked door, let's say, not in a prison, but we've, we've been, we've been looking at, we've been staring at and living with a door our whole lives and it's been locked. Now it's been unlocked, but because it's never been unlocked before, we're really taking our fucking time before we open it, right? Because we're so used to it being closed and locked. So right now, we're looking at the door, we know it's unlocked, but we're not quite ready to step through it, we're not quite ready to open it and see what's on the other side of it. That's how I feel this energy is for us right now. Actually, the more I think about it, the more accurate that analogy actually is. It's not a prison at all. It came to me originally as this vision of like being in a prison and now the cell door is unlocked, but no one wants to leave. That's not what it is at all. It's more that we've had this locked door in our home, right? Within us, um, our whole lives. And we're just so used to it being locked. We've actually never really considered what's on the other side of it because we just know that what's on the other side isn't for us well now it is now now what's on the other side is for us it is for us to explore um but we just need a little bit of time you know we're we're human we're used to this physical reality where things sort of move quite slowly um, compared to the spiritual realm anyway, the spiritual realm, realm uh, vibrates at a much higher frequency and it moves way faster than it does here in the physical reality. So we've gotten used to, <laughs> right, structure, we've gotten used to things moving in a particular way and things being structured in a certain way and we're used to that door being closed. We We know that what's behind it we don't need, but now we do, right? So we just need this this time just to just to chill right just to sort of consider reconsider and reconsider again <laughs> you know what's behind that door where where you know how has my life been up until this point how is it different now you know we we feel a little bit like we're kind of floating around and because we're not used to that sort of freedom we're not used to the freedom of being able to choose our own rules, our own boundaries and our own limitations. We're used to that being enforced upon us by another by another entity, by Saturn, right? By the old world, by society. Now we have the opportunity to restructure things as we see fit for ourselves. And we're not used to that. That's completely alien energy. So we really need this time. This the more I talk about it, right? the more essential it seems, doesn't it? For us just to have a little breather, just to have this little state of ebb, this introspective time so that we can figure out, you know, you know, am I ready yet? We're not quite ready. We, we need to prepare ourselves. So let's see. I don't know if there's going to be anything else to come from... Uh, the present energies I really feel like I've covered it all but let's just see if there's anything else that spirit wants to point out all right so we do have the hungry ghosts obsessions scarcity consciousness and attachment okay what we're being shown here then is just to be be consciously aware as like as much as you can as as to what the hell is going on with energies and the different retrogrades and such because if we get attached to the old world and the old ways, we will be forever lost. Because those energies are no longer present. And we are built in the old world. It is essential that we, that we adjust. We have to surrender. We have to let go. We have to change. We have to. If we don't, all is lost. It is just, I can't stress this enough, it is essential 
that we release and we let go and we change. We need to be brave. We need to be positive about these changes. I mean, <clears throat> I can't, I can't tell you enough how excited I am for this new time. The, our bodies are being restructured. The way we think is being restructured. We're finding our freedom. We're finding our self-expression. We're experiencing ourselves and this reality and each other in such a new and, and abundantly different way. It's like nothing we've ever experienced before. We're, we're, we're experiencing love in such a deep, profound way that we never have before. That, that this old structure wouldn't allow, right? <clears throat> we're finding ways to express ourselves that we were never able to do. We're being accepted by by others, you know, in a way that we never, never were before. You know, if you look at the old world, it wasn't okay to be transsexual. It wasn't okay to be gay. It wasn't okay to be a particular race, right? And now it is. We can see on a, on a global scale how these energies are, are changing attitudes and it's happening so passively. But what we're doing here with these readings is we're, we're not being passive about it. We're really digging in and understanding why these things are changing. And, and when we pay attention to, to these details, we can actively change and restructure ourselves in a way that we want to, in a way that accommodates our desires for ourselves and for our lives and for the people around us. And isn't that just so fucking exciting? You guys, we can create nirvana, heaven on earth for ourselves, right? Everything that you've ever wanted for yourself, you can have. But, but now I, I really hope that you see, that you understand that in order for all of that wonderful, incredible, amazing stuff to happen, you have to let go of the old world. You have to let go of the old you. You have to not be attached <laughs> to the old world to the old you to the old friends to the old family to the old structure to the old way of doing things to the old rules to the old limitations to the old boundaries right it just the old perspective like people stuff and things you gotta release them all including yourself you just gotta release it all so i'm gonna Let's move on, right? Because I, I can speak so passionately about all of this stuff until the day I die. And I will, and that's my duty for the collective. But we're not going to do it right here today in this reading. Because <laughs> this, uh, this video will go on for years. Um, so let's just see if there's anything else. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yes, I love it when spirit answers me. Okay, so we have the cosmic heart. Devotion, potency, make your life a moving prayer. Right, I hope you can see by the way that I speak so passionately about this stuff, this is exactly what I'm doing. Um, this is exactly what I'm embracing and I will continue to embrace it for the rest of my natural born life. My role as Alice. Um, I... You know, I hope that you guys do the same for yourselves and hence for the collective. Um, do it for you first and, it, you know, the collective stuff will follow. Excuse me. But we can see here that this is how um, Saturn retrograde energy is really influencing us and we are being encouraged by spirit. Hiya. <laughs> see, Lottie agrees. Um, by spirit to... Um, to just fucking let go, right? Just let go, you guys. Just let go and surrender and be the best version of yourself. So let's have a look at future energy. I think we'll stick with the same um, decks here because they're working very well. So 
Oh, beautiful. Okay, so future energy we've got two here we've got volcano volatility and we've got milky way perspective so we can see here how very explosively our perspective on reality is being changed um i don't feel like there's really much else for me to say about that um i'm pretty sure i've covered it in all of you know in everything that i've said for this whole video so far um i don't want this video to be too long we're already 45 minutes in so i'm not trying to rush through I just feel like I've already covered this, okay? So we can see that this, these new perspectives are going to come in very wildly, um, quite explosively. It's going to be pretty volatile. Um, so grounding is essential. Now, Pluto being retrograde in Capricorn, which is an Earth sign, is also helping, as I said at the beginning of this video, Pluto and Saturn retrograde energies are working in tandem. They're working in duo with one another right now. They will continue to until the other planets move into retrograde, um, which is over the next only over the next couple of days. So for the last couple of months, they've been working in, in uh, tandem. Well, Pluto went first, now Saturn for the last month. So for the last month, let's say, they've been working with each other. And um, Pluto has been bringing this very beautiful earthbound uh, grounding energy. So ground yourselves actively if you're not doing that already. Um, do kick your feet, uh, kick your feet off. <laughs> no, don't do that. You need your feet. Kick your shoes and socks off and get your feet in the dirt outside. Get your feet in the grass. Walk around barefoot outside as much as you can. Um, but stay safe. Okay. Just walk on grass, you know, and <laughs> don't go walking around on tarmac and pavements and things. Broken glass. Okay. It's not good. Um, and is very dirty so grass okay natural places grass um, also getting your feet into like a riverbed or something you know walking around in like natural um, water um, I'm not suggesting that you jump into a canal also that's pretty dangerous and very unclean so just be sensible you guys okay Going to the beach, right? Kicking your shoes and socks off and walking around barefoot where the water is, you know, where the waves are lapping against the shore, right? That's what I'm talking about. Or walking around in a field or walking around in a forest barefoot, okay? Um, this is very much going to ground you. And also um, working with dark coloured crystals. If you're a crystal freak like me and you want to work with crystals, um tourmaline uh like black tourmaline um obsidian any kind of obsidian is fine obsidian snowflake obsidian um and black onyx working with dark stones on your altar putting them under your pillow at night when you go to bed um carrying it around in your pocket just holding it whilst you're watching netflix or whatever it's going to ground you and it's going to greatly benefit you during this volatile time um so just be aware that you know grounding is uh is definitely going to help you um i would say i mean this is future energy right so i'm going to say when we move into the next state of flow which is soon it's like next week right um so just be aware of that okay if you start feeling a little bit like if you start feeling a bit wobbly or you feel perhaps over emotional and a bit tearful, um, you feel overwhelmed, that's when you need to get grounded. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Any other advice from Spirit for this future energy? Okay, so we've got the Queen of Light, Illumination, Enlightenment and Celebration. Um... We've also got Libra energy with this card. So we're being asked to balance ourselves during this time. Again, ground yourself and also know and work your inner light. Um, if you're witchy woo and you want to work with crystals and you want to work with an altar and you want to work with burning sage and all that stuff, do it, right? Really indulge in that stuff. Um, work your inner light. Um 
also literally working with light so candles um primarily uh candles over artificial light again please be safe be sensible burn candles in a sensible way never leave a lit candle in a room unattended um please please okay i don't want any of you coming to me saying i burnt a candle and i burnt my fucking house down okay please be careful never ever ever leave a candle unattended um now we also have sisters of the seasons this also flew out when i shuffled cycles of growth natural law and divine order okay so remind yourselves during this volatile time that all of this stuff is so necessary it's necessary for our growth um spirit is not out to get you it's not trying to fuck with you it's not trying to upset you it's not trying to throw you into flux or out of balance all of this stuff is essential this energy that is is bringing about important essential growth within um it's helping you okay Yes, you will have days and you will have moments of just feeling like you've had enough and you want a rest and you want the old world back and you just, you're done, right? You are going to have times where you feel that way. But during those times, please, my lovelies, ground yourselves. Indulge in the witchy woo. Indulge in something that you're passionate about. Indulge in something that's creative love yourself through these times mother yourself through these times if you were your which you are your own best friend what would they say to you if you said to them i'm feeling tearful i'm feeling vulnerable i'm feeling overwhelmed i feel tired i feel like i've had enough you know i just want chocolate and a cuddle and a blankie right what would your friend say to you they would say to you, I love you, everything is fine, you're fine, you're going to continue to be fine, let's get you a blankie and Netflix and some chocolate and let's cuddle up for the night and everything's fine, you're safe, you're good, I've got you, I love you, right? Do these things for, for yourself during this time and say these things to yourself be kind to yourself love yourself okay i'm gonna leave it there i i i i don't know i don't feel like there's anything else i haven't already covered <laughs> okay all right whatever right <laughs> this just flew out as i picked up this deck cracked open rock bottom surrender to the alchemy of life right this is this just echoes exactly what i said so i was right i didn't need to draw another card because that just echoes what i just said so so take care of yourselves everybody self-care is the the name of the game here um watch this reading as many times as you need to to glean all of the information from it um, I know we did a lot of talking for like 20 minutes at the beginning of this video. Um, there is a lot going on. You, you know, you've got to love yourself through this time. We are changing. Everything is being restructured. So to the best of your ability, guide yourself, you know, be your own guiding light and let what you're passionate about and what you love doing guide you to you know what you desire right let that decide for you and decipher what you desire so i will love very much and leave you guys have a wonderful rest of your day i really hope that this reading guides you well um i hope that you know i just i really hope that it serves you well and as i said there's lots of different readings there's a pluto retrograde retrograde reading there's the twin flame collective readings that we do every tuesday there's the mystical monday readings that we do every monday where we just do a general vibe check and see what's going on with the energies generally speaking readings like this we dig into certain elements but there's also the overall readings like just go just go and have a look at the uh, collective reading playlist you guys 
Um, there's bound to be something there that will offer you some comfort when you're feeling like you need it. Um, and, you know, don't forget to like these videos. That really helps me out as well because it shows me that I'm doing something right. You know, it, it when people don't like the videos, then it makes me kind of go back to the drawing board and and see how I can make these videos better. And, you know, comments always help as well. Let me know if these readings are helping you and how they're helping you, because that helps me. It helps me to make this information more accurate for you. Um, you know, it, it helps me to know, like, and don't be afraid to give me a pointer, like, hey, Alice, you know, can you do a reading on this? Can you structure your readings this way? Because that really, really helps me out. I am flying blind with this energy. I'm just kind of letting it pour out of me how it comes to me when I channel. But if you don't like videos and you don't comment on the videos, then I don't know if it is actually helping you guys. So, you know, don't be afraid to like and, and, and comment. You know, if you've got some constructive criticism for me, go for it. I'm not going to be offended. I do uh, my best to answer every comment as well. So um, I'd really appreciate that. So just putting that out there. Um, don't forget to subscribe as well. If you're a viewer and you haven't yet subscribed and these readings are helping you, then do subscribe because again, that helps me, right? Hashtag elevate everyone. Let's elevate each other. Let's, um, let's begin this mutual exchange of energy um all of this stuff really helps me helps the channel supports me and all that good stuff so i will again i will love and leave you i will shut the fuck up and let you get on with your day i really hope that you guys have an amazing rest of your day and remember that you are loved you are important and you are supported and i will see you guys in the next one